What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the bakery for another YouTube video. In today's video, I'm gonna be taking you guys through my entire process for making stainless sand my steel. We won't quite have a finished knife by the end of this video. It'll be about 80% complete, but the steel will be 100% complete. And I'll be able to show you guys what a finished product looks like using this particular forging method. Uh, there's a lot of metallurgy and a lot of big words and a lot of science that go into this particular project. And I'm not gonna bore you with all that. I am going to explain it the best way that I know and take you through the process uh, that's had the most success for me. So uh, let's break it down a little bit further. Okay, so first and foremost, for anybody who's very, very new to all this, uh, what is Sanmai? Sanmai is Japanese, and it translates literally to three units, or three flat units, or three layers. There's a couple different ways to do this method. I'll probably provide other videos on those methods later on down the road. But for this particular video, we are going to be taking two pieces of a stainless steel and using them on the outside of our billet as our outer jacket. And then we're taking a high carbon steel and putting that in between them for our core. And once that's all forge welded into one solid piece, it's going to create a really bold difference in our finished product because stainless steel reacts very differently than high carbon steel in an etchant. So what I have here for us straight out of the box from New Jersey Steel Baron is a piece of 52100 high carbon steel and a piece of AEBL stainless steel. We're going to take our time with this, get them cleaned up on the surface grinder, and then I'll show you what's next. <laughs> Okay, so we're all cleaned up, we're surface ground flat, and we have all of our ingredients here ready for our little uh, stainless sand my sandwich, if you will. Um, I just want to talk a bit more about the method before we go any further. So as you can see here, we're using three equal parts of steel. Each piece is a quarter of an inch thick. And the reason for that is because once it's forge welded together and it becomes one solid piece, and then we draw it out to a length and thickness that we're looking for. When the time comes to get our knife shape going and we start grinding in our bevels down to that edge, right? Hopefully evenly on both sides. We'll end up exposing about the same amount of that high carbon steel core throughout the length of the billet. If you start messing around with stainless that's too thin, you'll end up grinding straight through it and defeating the purpose of the method. And if you use stainless that's too thick, you may never grind through enough to get to that high carbon core, or you're gonna waste a lot of belts doing it because stainless steel is no fun to grind. So uh, equal parts is what I found for the best chance of success in this method. So uh, let's get it welded up and thrown in the forge. As I start to weld up this billet, it's also worth mentioning that you wanna weld it up completely all the way around on all sides totally eliminating the chance of oxygen from getting in between the layers. And that's normally what you would strive for in any forge weld with mild steels and high carbon steels. But with stainless steel in particular, it requires the presence of a vacuum. We need a guaranteed 0% chance of oxygen in between the layers. And even then the forge weld is difficult and there's a, there's a pretty high rate of failure. Stainless steel is a pretty difficult steel to forge weld. 
and it requires a much higher forge welding heat, so we're going to be really, really patient with it in the forge. Now that we have the dimensions that we're looking for in the billet, we're going to shut down the forge and put the billet back in the forge and let it kind of naturally cool down for about an hour or so. And I'm going to fire up the kiln and we're going to anneal it totally. And that's just going to make it a bit softer. It's going to be easier for us to grind our knife to shape. That's a wrap on another Muffin Made video here on the channel. Thank you all for coming back and hanging out with me. We managed to put together a pretty sweet knife using the stainless sand my forging method. I hope I provided enough detail to explain this technique a little bit further for all of you out there. And I also hope I provided some additional instruction for any of you beginners out there who are looking to attempt this technique yourself. This particular video took a little bit longer to make than my regularly scheduled monthly content that usually comes out of the channel. And that's basically because I have a lot of large projects I'm currently working through, as well as some big shifts in how videos are gonna be made here in the bakery. Some, some big news is coming out of the bakery and I'm going to be sharing that with you all as soon as I have a few more ducks in a row and it's more official. Uh, until then, like, share, subscribe, stick around for my news. I'll release it as soon as uh, a few more things come together. And uh, I'm going to go throw some handle scales on this and get this custom order out. And we'll catch you on the next one.